We've now looked at vectors in R2 and R3. We've looked at what they are, how we define them, how we add them, and we looked at scalar multiples of vectors. What we're going to look at this section is what we call basis vectors. Now, I have to say, we're using the word basis, and I will talk about these vectors shortly. We're using the word basis, but we didn't quite define what a basis is. Now, if you look at the section of real vector spaces, there we go into more detail of what a basis is. So now we're going to have a bit more of an intuitive understanding of what a basis vector is. Now, in R2, there's two basis vectors, i and j. So i is a vector one unit in the x direction, j is a vector one unit in the y direction. And in R3, i, j, and k are the three vectors in the x direction, y direction, and z direction. We call those the basis vectors. Because if I've got any vector, let's look at the vector 4, 2. I can write that vector in terms of this basis vectors. Because that is 4 times the vector i, because it's 4 steps in the x direction, plus 2 steps in the y direction. So any vector can be written as a scalar multiple of the basis vectors i and j. So that's a rough understanding of what a basis is, if I can write a, any vector in that space as a linear combination of those. So any vector, we can write it as 4, 2, this vector in this case, or I can write it as 4i plus 2j. So these are also different notations, so just be aware that this, write it in terms of its components, i and j is still a notation for a vector. And similarly in R3. So let's take a look. If we write the sum difference scalar multiple in terms of the basis vectors, it's still the same operations that we looked at in the previous video. It's now just in terms of i, j, and k. So where my original vectors are a 1i plus a 2j plus a 3k. So that means in the other notation, vector v is just a 1, a 2, and a 3. And same with vector w, b1, b2, and b3. All right, so let's take a look at what this helps us with. Here we've got a statement. If I've got a vector v in R2, if it makes an angle of theta with a positive x-axis and the magnitude of v is equal to a, then I've got this whole statement here. Now, before we look at that, let's see what's going on here. Now he's saying, okay, we do not necessarily have the vector in one of the notations we've got, but I know it makes the angle theta with the x-axis. And I know its magnitude. So that's what I know about the vector. I've got the vector v, the magnitude is a, and it makes that angle theta with the x-axis. If I'm not given any other information than that, I can still write it in a components. I can still write it in terms of i and j, or with the triangle brackets. We'll get to that notation shortly. How do I do it? Well, we know we want this. This is what we want, that distance, and we want that distance. Well, if I look at cos theta, cos theta is adjacent over the hypotenuse, so it's the x value over a. So I know to get to this x value, it's a cos theta. Let me just not put an equal sign there. Sine of theta is y over a. So therefore, if I want to get to y, it's a sine theta. So if I've got the angle with the positive x-axis and the magnitude, I can get the components. It's a cos theta and a sine theta. So that's quite handy. If I don't have the x and the y, I've got the magnitude and the angle, then we can use that. So let's then take a look. If I've got the vector 4 minus 2, find the angle between v and the positive x-axis. All right, so let's just see where this vector is. 4 in the x-direction, 2 in the y-direction, so it's going in this direction. So I already suspect this angle is going to be a negative angle, because I've got a 4 there and a minus 2. Let me rather write it like that. All right. So what do I know? I've got 4 minus 2. So I know 4 minus 2 is the same as a 
cos theta, A sine theta. Now what is A? A was the magnitude of the vector. So the magnitude of V is the root of 16 plus 4, so that's the square root of 20. So I know 4 is root 20 cos theta, while minus 2 is root 20 sine theta. Now you can use either of those as an equation. So if I've got 4 is equal to root 20 cos theta, then I know cos theta is equal to 4 over root 20. And you can use your calculator then to find the value of theta. Now we're going to have to round off, so I'm saying it's approximately equal to minus 26.57 degrees. And you can use your calculator with that. And to check, you can use the sign as well. But that is the angle that this vector makes with that positive x-axis. So we can use that to find either the vector or the angle if I'm given some of the information. So just a summary of all these properties we have with vectors. I'm not going to prove these properties, but it's good to be aware of it. We've looked intuitively at the fact that vector addition is commutative, but the addition also is also associative. You can pause and just slowly read through these. Just take note, number seven, we've got the zero scalar times the vector v gives me the zero vector. That's important. But the rest you can read through and make sure you're happy with these properties of vectors with addition and scalar multiplication. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the dot product between two vectors.